Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Code With Me. This is a series where we showcase some of the upcoming features that will be in 4.0, and it's also a chance for you to look at how I code and what I'm going to add next. So in this video, or in the last video, we talked about the Passenger Information Display Systems Part 1, in which we added some extra information that we'll show here, mainly the delays. So as you can see here, there's the A for arrival and D for delay. However, these are all subject to change and they're going to be customizable as well in the future. So the next train that's coming here, for example, will come in 9 seconds with a delay of 88 seconds. So here it is. I've also kind of changed up these trains from full MLR to a mix of different trains, just to show you how this looks. And one big thing that you might notice here is that the FPS is terrible. The reason for that is because we're switching between textures a lot. For example, this is rendered using the SP1900 texture, and then the C1141A texture, the Tongchong Line Airport Express MLR texture. And as you can see, our frames per second here is like 12, 13, maybe 14 at best. Not great, especially if I go over here, take a look at all these trains just being delayed, waiting around. So my FPS drops to 9, 7, 6. Yeah, not great. So, if you have also played with Nemo's Transit Expansion, you know that Nemo has added... Oh, whoa. Hello, Wandering Villager. You know that Nemo also has added an OBJ loader into his mod. And OBJ is a model format for 3D models. And the way that Nemo's coding it in makes it run really well. I'm in his project right now. MTR Steam Loco is the repository name of the Nemo Transit Expansion mod. And this folder, this folder, S-O-W-C-E-R, it stands for something. I had to look it up real quick. Simple OpenGL wrapper for complex entity rendering. Okay, so we have a folder here, a folder here. What this does is it manipulates the rendering pipeline a little bit so that the models are built in advance. And when you call the rendering, it just renders the vertices that you have built in advance with a common transform. So if you don't understand too much of the rendering details of how Minecraft does things, it's very inefficient and it builds the model every tick or every time the game renders. That's why if I keep switching textures or I have a lot of models being rendered, the frames per second, the FPS goes down like this. So then I decided, what if I hacked his mod, stole the code, and plugged it into here to 4.0? Wouldn't that make everything run so much faster than this 12 FPS I'm getting right now? Let's do it! Alright, so after some intense hacking, we're back, and the new rendering has been implemented using Nemo's code. So let's take a look at what the FPS is now. 39. All right. I would say that's quite an improvement from before. So as you can see, it's still not perfect. Like, there's some lighting issues when I turn my mouse. You can see the lighting changes according to where I'm viewing. And if I look inside the train, it seems like the lighting of the floor and the ceiling are flipped upside down. This is because I am rotating the model before I'm applying the final transformation to it. And there's some quirks like that with when you modify the matrix stack after the fact, then all the normals are a little bit messed up. So there's still some small cleanup work to do, but for the most part, this is much, much better. Also, the headlights, taillights, and the doors aren't working right now. So, 
Right now the frames per second is about 34, right? And let me go back to the code. And let's go ahead and disable the rail rendering. So I'm going to comment that out. And then I'm going to go into this render vehicles as well and disable the gangway and barrier rendering. So those are still using the old method of rendering. The reason is because the connection and the barriers or the gangway and the barriers change too much. They're not perfect squares and the shape shifts according to where the train is. So there's no way to cache the vertices like we do with the main train models. So now I'm skipping the gangway and barrier rendering. I'm also skipping the rail rendering, which is still using the old method of Minecraft rendering. So if those both of those are disabled, let's see what the frames per second is now. So we're loaded back in and there's no barrier and train connector and rail rendering. So let's see what the frames per second is. 80, 85, 95, 98, 104. I'm not sure why it keeps climbing or why it's unstable like that. But anyway, I'm not upset. Look at that. Look how smooth this is. It's 100 and climbing. Or it's fluctuating quite a bit. Again, I, I'm not sure why, but... Wow, this is amazing. Look how smooth it is. Well, now it dropped down to 80 something. Oh, now it's back to 160. Wow. Sometimes you might notice a little bit of stuttering because the frames per second is way too high for what the monitor can handle. That's why there's a video setting for VSync, which means that the frames per second will sync with the screen that you have, the display refresh rate of your monitor. So now it's going to be capped at 60. So then it's going to be much smoother because it's going to be the same refresh rate as my monitor. But it can also drop a little bit under 60 as you can see when I was flying around like that. And also I temporarily bound this new rendering setting to one of the options in here. So dynamically boost FPS. If it's on, then it's going to use the new rendering. If I turn it off, then it's going to go back to the old rendering. And look, now I'm back at 13 FPS. And then if I go back and turn this on, and we're back, 60 FPS. Or if I turn off my VSync, Wow, 153, 165, there we go. So as I mentioned, there's still a, f still a few more things to fix, such as the door opening and getting the headlights and taillights to work. But overall, I'm really happy with the result. Huge thanks to Nemo and the Nemo Transit expansion mod, the NTE mod for the code. And I'm just kidding about the hacking, by the way. It's open source with the MIT license online on GitHub. So anyone can go there and take a look at the code for themselves. Even this mod, this mod is open source licensed with the MIT license. So you're free to do whatever that license allows you to do. So thank you to Nemo again. This is a really big change to the mod and I hope everyone is excited about this. Please stay tuned for more updates, subscribe to the channel, and like this video if you enjoyed it. And thank you again so much to all Patreons, server supporters, Discord subscribers, and I'll see you next time. Bye!